videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Former President Donald Trump recently broke his silence with his post arraignment speech which took place at his Mar-a-Lago residence in Palm Beach, Florida. These were his first public comments made after becoming the first commander in chief in US history to be arraigned on criminal charges. While Trump has been living at his lavish mansion in Florida, the news has been buzzing since he was served almost three dozen charges in a Manhattan court. In March, a Manhattan grand jury voted to indict former President Trump after a years long probe into a 2016 hush money payment to adult star Stormy Daniels. He was then charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Trump's recent speech was made at his current property in Florida where he lives full time and to his supporters he said, I have a great family and they've done a fantastic job and we appreciate it very much. They've gone through a lot. I have a son here, Don Jr. who has done a great job, another son here, Eric who has done a great job and Ivanka. He added referring to three of his four adult children and Baron will be great someday. The former president went on, shouting out his teenage son with his third wife, Melania. He is tall and he is smart. It doesn't appear Melania was spoken about during Trump's speech either, but the pair is still reportedly living together at Mar-a-Lago, which doubles as both the Trump family mansion and an exclusive club. The property is a home base of sorts for the former president. He announced that he was running for president again at the estate last year. Trump teased a third run for office for several months before the announcement. Several of Trump's advisors had reportedly advised him against announcing his intent to run so early, but then in August 2022, the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, searching for classified records that Trump didn't return to the National Archives and Records Administration after his presidential term ended. These are dark times for our nation as my beautiful home is currently under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, the statement read. Trump remained at Mar-a-Lago logo for the following months. During Trump's presidency, the exclusive resort was often referred to as the quote unquote winter white house, but now it's just his house. Donald Trump and Melania took up permanent residency at their stunning Mar-a-Lago estate in January, 2021, located in an exclusive area of Florida's Palm Beach. Considering the property was originally built in the 1920s, it has quite the history as well. The mansion was constructed between 1924 and 1927, for the socialite and post-serial heiress Marjorie Merriweather Post, who inherited her father's serial empire when she was 27 after his tragic suicide. Post amassed a fortune of $250 million, which will be equal to about $1.5 billion these days, making her one of the richest women in US history. So of course she went all out when it came to her Oceanside mansion. She hired architect Marion Sims, who specialized in Gilded Age and her design to envision her winter retreat treat on the beach. The 20 acre property offers 128 rooms these days and spans the entire width of the island Palm Beach is on, from the Atlantic Ocean to the intercoastal waterway. The Spanish Moorish style mansion had exterior stone imported from Italy and tens of thousands of antique tiles dating back to the 15th century that came from a castle in Cuba. Many fixtures were gold plated and in the end, Post's project went eight times over budget, a lot of which was was spent on the lavish living room. Here there was a statement ceiling that was a replica of the thousand wing ceiling in Venice and this plus the walls was covered in a ton of gold leaf. Post designed the library in an English Georgian style which offered antique British oak paneled walls. According to Trump's former butler, the shelves here were lined with super rare first edition books which actually received no appreciation from the Trump family who never once picked any of these books up. Inside Mar-a-Lago spans a whopping 62,500 square feet of space and the rooms are opulent as you might expect. While when Post had the mansion constructed, there was a mix of styles throughout. The guest and master bedrooms reach a total of 58 and originally these quarters all had different themes. For example, there was a Dutch bedroom with antique tiles from there, a glass covered Venetian style room, Spanish and Portuguese influenced rooms 
rooms and the Louis XIV master suite. Coincidentally enough, this was also known to be Trump's favorite style himself. After some sneaky bartering, Donald Trump scored the Mar-a-Lago estate in 1985 from the Post family for the mere price of $8 million, which included the property itself and all of its antique furnishings. He further turned Mar-a-Lago into a private club in 1995 to help turn a profit from the massive estate, and he promised to carry out a restoration of the property in order to do so. Trump spent millions on the expensive restoration, which included a number of additions to the property. He built a 20,000 square foot ballroom with a rumored $7 million in gold leaf and a Louis XIV style, added two swimming pools, a beauty salon, and a spa, and even spent $100,000 each on four gold-plated sinks in the new ballroom. While the mega home went from 118 to 128 rooms, and it had all been restored, some of the antique contents were sold off at auctions and replaced with replicas. Some of the things Trump got rid of included the jewel-covered marble dining table, an antique Spanish rug, and Venetian glasses that were worth $1,000 a piece. These days, Donald and Melania maintain private quarters in a separate area of the Mar-a-Lago mansion, and this serves as their primary residence. However, in recent years, Melania is said to have done some updates of her own. In the master suite, which previously boasted the Versailles and Louis XIV style, it said that Melania wanted to expand the space and freshen things up. So she revamped and enlarged the owner's suite, choosing dark woods and white marble accents. She even updated the private quarters with more of a modern aesthetic, which it seems that her husband wasn't the biggest fan of, and he actually wanted to remove the wood and marble immediately. Aside from Trump's personal quarters, Mar-a-Lago offers club members access to two dining rooms, a beach club, pool, and spa, as well as guest suites. Those who step foot inside can enter through the detailed portico that leads to the main building, with plenty of neo-gothic accents throughout. The club's main living room boasts high ceilings and gold-plated designs on every wall. Because of its flat terrain and open-air access, Trump is even able to fly in his own helicopter if need be. And if the club's multiple beaches just aren't enough, you can relax by the various pools on the property. A few years back, Forbes estimated the value of Mar-a-Lago estate at around $160 million, having increased greatly over the years thanks to extensive renovations, lavish features, the historic background, and more. While he doesn't live there anymore, of course, we have to mention Donald's infamous Trump Tower residence in New York City. For many years, he had lived in the top three floors of the iconic tower, with his entire residence decorated in a gilded and opulent design, as you probably expect. 66 stories high in his penthouse on Fifth Avenue, Trump often enjoys nearly 11,000 sprawling square feet of living space and at the time when they lived here, his youngest son, Baron, reportedly had a floor all to himself. In the usual Trump fashion, this penthouse was decorated with over-the-top lavish details as well as cathedral ceilings, Corinthian columns, massive sparkling chandeliers, and gold accents throughout. The place just screams luxury, and it was modeled after the Palace of Versailles. Not to mention, it's a piece of pop culture history being featured on Trump's former show, The Apprentice. Trump took Forbes on a tour during the last presidential election, boasting that the size was about 33,000 square feet, but he over-exaggerated just a little bit. He had an office on the 26th floor in the building, so living and working here was easy. He even had a private elevator to go to and fro. When Trump built the tower in 83, the landmark skyscraper was one of the most recognizable and greatest in the world. When it was completed, it was the tallest glass building in Manhattan at the time, rising over six 600 feet into the city skyline and sitting on less than an acre of land. Visually striking with its glass curtain wall and sawtooth faceting, its bold bronze exterior is a dramatic architectural masterpiece. It's received rave reviews from the New York Times architecture critics. Inside, there was a 100-foot mirrored atrium, a 7-foot waterfall, marble floors, and much more. These days, it's said that Trump's massive penthouse would be worth an estimated $54 million. Well, since we don't entirely know where Donald Trump will be ending up soon and if he'll even end up in jail, we can just assume he'll be staying at Mar-a-Lago for as long as possible. And who could blame him? That place is a palace. But that's going to bring us to the end of today's house tour. Before we go, 
answer me this. If you were going to jail and were able to bring one thing along with you inside, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then stay tuned for this one where we check out the homes of another former president, Barack Obama. Bye! Barack Obama, who's best known for breaking barriers as the first African-American president of the United States. From 2009 to 2017, he was the 44th president of the US of A. Obama has been able to snag some pretty fancy real estate in Washington and Edgartown, along with his former home in Honolulu. While the Obamas were not wealthy for much of their adult lives, they first became millionaires around 2005, thanks to book royalties as Barack entered the political spotlight. Upon leaving office, Barack and Michelle rented a mansion in Washington, DC, while their youngest daughter finished high school. We'll take a look at Obama's $8.1 million mansion they purchased to snag the rental, along with their $14.9 million property on Martha's Vineyard. The property features a 7,000 square foot main home and 29 oceanfront acres of land. Barack Obama first gained national attention when he gave the keynote address at the Democratic National Convention in July 2004. On February 10, 2007, Barack announced he was running for President of the United States. He eventually faced off against Hillary Clinton to win the Democratic nomination. He won the nomination then with Joe Biden as his vice president, defeated John McCain to win the presidency. Between 91 and 2004, Barack never earned more than $30,000 for his work as a professor and state representative. The majority of the Obama family income during this time came from Michelle's lucrative salary as a lawyer, working primarily for the University of Chicago hospital system. In 2005, Barack's income jumped to 157,000 when he became a US Senator. In the same year, Michelle earned 273,000. However, because of his keynote address in 04, the Obama's combined salary jumped from 240,000 in 2000 to 5.5 million in 09. In 2017, we do know that the Obamas received a $65 million book advance from multiple books and media projects. After leaving the White House, they have made even more money from book advances and are now highly sought after public speakers. Now, as a result of the Obamas making bank, they have been able to snag some pretty luxurious places throughout the United States. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Marlon Paul and today we're bringing you another house tour here for you on Famous Entertainment. I noticed 95% of you guys are still not subscribed and you're still watching, so be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post new videos every day. We previously reported on uh, Jason Statham or Tiger Woods, so you can check those videos out. And now that we got the details on the new place, it was time for an update on this one. So if you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at that dude McFly to chat some more. And let me know whose house tour to do next in the comments down below. Let's get into the video. We were lucky enough to find Barack Obama's childhood home in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now the Obamas did not have a lot of money growing up, but this cozy little home served as the former president's home base from 1964 to 1967. This was also Obama's only single family dwelling in the US during his formative years. The house is one block from UH Manoa, which is where his mother studied. It was walking distance to nearby elementary schools, private schools, parks, and shopping. The unit was 1,900 square feet, plus 334 square feet covered Lene. The second is a cottage that comes complete with a 292 square square foot studio and one bathroom. There's a separate unit for guests or rental income and the cottage can be entered from Walu Way. President Obama purchased a home he was previously leasing for $22,000 a month in the upscale neighborhood of Calorama in Washington, DC. President Obama's house was estimated to be worth $5.9 million at the time of their lease in May 2016, but in June 2017, they paid $8.1 million for the home. The mansion was built back in the late 1920s and comes complete with nine bedrooms, eight and a half bedrooms, and a whopping 8,200 square feet. The large abode features three stories, three fireplaces, stunning hardwood floors throughout the majority of the home. The house sits on a quarter acre of land and backs up to mature trees and further away, a creek. The home has all the markings of a classic two-door with the white washed brick and a steep pitched roof which appears to be slate. A curved path of steps leads guests to the front entrance beneath a copper portico. There, state-of-the-art kitchen features bright white cabinetry against light gray walls along with marble countertops which give an airy and light feel. In addition to a large center island, the kitchen also boasts a small workspace and a breakfast nook. The spacious dining room comes complete with recessed lighting and a modern chandelier against a unique hardwood ceiling. The wainscoted walls add another touch of formality to this space and make the room a perfect spot for family dinners. Weather permitting, the Obamas can also open the French doors for some fresh air or head out to their state patio in the backyard. There's a sitting room that features conversational furniture arrangement beside a fireplace with a traditional white mantle. A less formal sitting room in the home contains a full wall of windows and French doors leading out to the backyard. 
The latter features conversational seating and a fireplace, a TV sat above the mantel in place of a large piece of art. Hidden in the house is an attic bedroom with a small modern ensuite bathroom and closet. When the Obamas purchased the home, it was fully updated and move-in ready. The kitchen was modernized with stunning countertops and great appliances, along with the bathrooms which featured marble tiling and countertops. So, no renovations required. The master bedroom gives a private, elegant, and calm ambiance and features a wall of windows that let in plenty of natural light. Perhaps the coolest feature on the lowest floor of the mansion is a huge and fully finished basement. Keeping with the 1920s style, a built-in bookcase spans the entire length of one wall. The best part of this basement, though, is the kitchen. Yes, that's right. The Obamas have two kitchens, and the one in the basement looks as balling as the one upstairs. Like the main kitchen, this secondary kitchen features marble countertops and stainless steel appliances. The Obama's most recent purchase in 2019 was an $11.75 million mansion that comes complete with seven bedrooms, eight and a half bedrooms, and 6,800 square feet. Now, if privacy is what the Obamas are looking for, they are in luck. This stunning custom house sits on over 29 private acres of manicured lawns, greenery, beach, and directly on the Edgar Town Great Pond. The long and winding driveway, sprawling lawn, and incredible water views make for the perfect family compound setting for generations to come. The nearly 7,000 square foot of main residence is finished with the finest details and is designed with multiple seating and entertaining spaces. A modern chef's kitchen and a formal circular dining room surrounded by a wall of windows overlooking the grounds. The spacious and dramatic living room space boasts vaulted ceilings with exposed steel beams and a focal point stone fireplace. There are two guest wings and an impressive master suite with fireplace, private sun deck, and spectacular water views. Not to mention you can spend summer days by the poolside in a garden-like setting with the sounds of the waves lapping in the distance. Or if you're feeling really adventurous, explore the expansive Great Pond, an outer barrier reach for a full day on the water. You are charmed with elegance as soon as you enter the abode as the home contains a large, elegant wraparound staircase with medium tone wood on the treads, white risers, white railings, and a thick wood handrail. While most of Martha's Vineyard mansions give off an ambience feel, the Obamas pulled an audible and went modern architecture and interesting design features. One particularly exciting feature is the ceiling in the home's circular sitting room. The high ceiling is accented with cement pillars and large wood beams that give the space a more modern look. If the Obamas decided to start a friendly games night, they can do so with their balling billiards table. This kitchen is a unique mix of classic and modern that features clean white tile, sparkling countertops, and new appliances. The kitchen also has some old world charm with wood paneling on the island, glass cabinets, and classic wood flooring. This dining room is circular and comes complete with a large circular dining table, big enough to fit 10. The space also boasts a stylish chandelier that holds a candle and windows that give this room absolutely stunning views. The spacious bedroom boasts a fireplace, beige carpets, and clean white walls to give this master retreat a relaxed, cozy feel. To make the room feel even bigger, there are windows above the bed as well as full-length glass doors to provide plenty of natural light. While the stunning bathroom features the cabinets and great countertops, double-sided vanity mirrors, tons of storage and bright pendant lights, there's even a large bathtub with a view of the yard. Another guest room contains a kid's room featuring two sets of bunk beds pushed against the walls. The guest room has large windows that let in lots of natural light in addition to providing a great view of the trees and massive yard outside. Probably the coolest feature of the house is in the massive balcony off of the master bedroom, complete with a hot tub. It also features a staircase from the deck down the side of the home leading down to the yard so you know you don't bring water through the house. We can't forget about the porch comes complete with a big stone and brick fireplace white columns, great tile floors, and lots of room for sitting around. The Obama's home also features a beautiful pool with lots of room for a table and plenty of space for lounge chairs. Tucked away is the Obama's private beachfront with a boathouse, which features a paved walkway from the house all the way down to the private beach. All right, so I think I'll bring this house tour to an end here. We got to take a quick look at Barack Obama's home and that massive beachfront property that features his very own boathouse. After seeing that fancy little abode he snagged, what did you guys think? Was it everything you would expect out of Obama? Personally, I thought the hot tub with the balcony, that was just out of this world. Out of Obama's features, which were your fave? You guys can go ahead and rate them in the comments down below. I'd also love it if you guys give my personal channel, that dude McFly, a little subscribe. You know, I post a video every, uh, you know, whatever. And I'll see you guys next time.